All right. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to talk to my friend Jody Cohen from Vibrant Blue Oils to talk about all things health. She's also a nutritional therapist and just out there speaking all over at conferences. And you are, Jody, just so filled with passion and drive, especially right now with our whole world not really paying attention to health building and self care and wellness. So, thanks for making time to kind of dive into how we build health and immunity. Oh my gosh, always. Thank you for having me and for all the amazing work you're doing. I, I so admire your mission too. Yeah, you know, I just was telling you that I feel like we all need to get together and gang up <laughs> on yeah. the, the rest of the world is just, you know, talking about in Seattle, you're in Seattle as well, just social distancing and PPE. What I feel like we need to keep speaking about is that you have to take care of your own health. And I said today, posted responsibility, ownership, self-care, because you can do all the protection you want, but that has nothing to do with improving your health and your immune system, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I heard um, one of the experts, I think it was Judy Minkovitz, and she was talking about there's kind of two stages of disease, right? There's the pathogen that either gets into your system or doesn't, and then there's the response. So it's you might think of it like the three little pigs, right? The big bad wolf tried to blow down the house of straw, the house of wood, and the house of brick. And guess what? When the house was built with brick, he couldn't do it. So it doesn't really matter what's happening outside of you as long as you're able to make sure that your immune system is as strong as possible. Even if you were exposed, you're very unlikely to get it. It's far less contagious than we're being told, it seems. Well, we're being told something different every day, right? So, <laughs> like, okay, the CDC says this, and, and Dr. Yeah. Fauci says this, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, you know, how do you protect yourself, and all that, and it's just, is it contagious? If you get it, do you get it again? And just all this information is just unknown, and I just was writing someone who said, in 10 years, five years from now, after they have time to do a little more research, are they going to say, we did this all wrong? <laughs> yeah, of course they are. And they made a lot of mistakes, but that's kind of, a, it's a data point because what your listeners need to know is that you don't need to be a victim. You can have a lot of power in this situation and you can do, you know, basically what they're talking about with the masks and the gloves, you know, our innate immune system is basically our barriers, right? So what are our barriers? Our skin is our barrier. And then mostly it's our gut because anything like the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the ears, they all kind of drain into the gut. And then what the gut microbe does is it determines like, is this good? Or is this bad? And it reacts. So having healthy gut microbe, you know, taking a probiotic every day, making sure that when you're digesting your food, you're eating in the parasympathetic state so that all of the nutrients can get absorbed. Like that's a really good way to just make sure that you're in the best shape possible, that your house is built of bricks and no matter what happens, you know, there are a lot of people that think they probably had it and it was just a mild cold and it went away in a couple days. That could very easily be most of us as long as we, you know, just do the best we can to make sure we're getting sleep. You know, melatonin is being shown to have a really big impact on preventing this disease. That's actually why they think a lot of the kids aren't getting it because melatonin, it, it's interesting, like anyone who's had kids, those first three months, the melatonin cycle is really wonky. And that's why they don't really know when they're supposed to be sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then once melatonin kicks in, then they can actually sleep through the night. You can sleep through the night. And then in the teenage years, it kind of changes again and makes it, it kicks in later at night and lasts more through the morning. So that's why it's so hard to get your teenager up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then as you get older, it declines. So anything that you can do to kind of trigger the natural release of um, melatonin from your pineal gland, so limiting bright lights at night, making sure your room is dark, um, supplementing with external melatonin. I like sublingual better. Mm -hmm. um, there's a company called Quicksilver that makes a really yeah. good brand. Uh, we have an essential oil called circadian rhythm that helps the pineal gland release melatonin. That's going to keep you really healthy. And then just, you know, balancing your stress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking about the immune system, just the basics, how it works, you just gave a great, simple 30 second overview. I mean, that's just how it should work. And we're born with it. And we forget, no one really talks about how the immune system work. I wrote this 60 page manual so far that keeps growing on immune system 101 and just like here's the definition what does this mean because it's foreign words for the layperson that's not a health practitioner so 
you know, just simplifying it, I think is so important that, okay, you're born with this, you have an innate and you're adaptive and we have troops and we have weapons and our body's supposed to be built to defend from foreigners coming in. And if we're a weak host, we're gonna have invaders. And if you're not able to be strong enough to fight up those invaders, you're going to have issues, <laughs> challenges, yeah. problems, imbalances. Yeah, well, I think when you start getting into the vocabulary words, you know, of like the macrophages <laughs> and the lymphocytes, people's eyes glaze over. But yes. when you can really make it pretty basic, and I think you did a great job, you know, and, and the more, it's, it's just about balance, right? It's about getting sunlight about being able to breathe oxygen, which is one of the challenges with these masks. You know, I haven't found anything that says that it actually prevents you from getting the virus. The literature I've looked at says that it's kind of like having, you know, a metal fence and trying to stop mosquitoes from getting through. But what I have seen is that it does two things. It kind of impedes your ability to get oxygen in, you know, and it also kind of traps the carbon monoxide. So it compromises your um, breathing. So you know, just, you know, if, if you're very worried, go ahead and if, if you're around other people, you know, do whatever feels right. But in the comfort of your own home or your own car, when it's just you, maybe consider not wearing your mask so you get better oxygen. That's funny because we were just, you know, it's, I think people are doing that because they're so scared. Of yeah. The fear out there and the unknown because data is different every day and someone will say this, someone will say that, and just people are confused what to do. And so you see people working in their yard in my neighborhood with a face mask on or yeah. walking with nobody around. I'm like, no, you don't need that. And I just get so sad. And frustrated that the information is so confusing and I bought a 10 pack of these three ply masks because that's what I was you know told were the best ones at the time and I actually got my money back because I put it on like okay problem I can't some of them smell like a lot of chemicals which is also concerning to me yeah but yeah. if you can't breathe with a mask properly, who's more important? I mean, you wear it to protect yourself from spreading a virus that you might have that you don't know about, which is like, you should probably know if you're sick or not, but that's what's confusing. It's like, do you wear a mask or not? But anyway. here's, here's where I've kind of landed. It seems that a temperature is a really big symbol, right? Mm -hmm. And that even if you're pre-symptomatic, just by taking your temperature, which is not that hard to do, it's almost like a security check for yourself. Like, okay, my temperature is healthy. It's very likely that if I was sick, it wouldn't be. So I feel pretty comfortable that I'm healthy and that I'm not going to get anyone else sick. But, you know, I'm also courteous. And if I'm in a supermarket, I'm, I'm certainly not going to make yeah. anyone else uncomfortable. But the second I get out of the supermarket, I take it off. Yeah. And the, the other thing that you raised that I want to kind of talk about is this idea of um, feeling safe and danger. Mm -hmm. And when we feel safe and secure, we're able to see a lot more options and think more clearly. Mm -hmm. And one thing, this is really about um, the parasympathetic state, which is kind of the safety state. So your body is designed mm -hmm. to survive, right? And so your nervous system, if it senses danger, and that could be any kind of danger, it could be a car that's about to change into your lane that doesn't see you. It could be, you know, they always talk about the saber-toothed tiger chasing you. It could be fearing that you're going to um, lose your job or, you know, lose a relationship. Anything that gets you into that panicked state, your body switches gears to survive. And a couple things happen. Your heart starts beating faster because it needs to pump the blood to your extremities so that you can either fight, flee, or um, freeze you know, your, your breathing gets kind of more shallow so that it can rush oxygen. And the other thing that happens is your pupils get really, really big. They dilate. Mm -hmm. You can see it as almost like black saucers in the eyes. And what happens there is you just need to make that next move to keep you safe, being if it's like honking your horn and braking so that the car doesn't hit you, if it's running out of the house and to that next safe place, tree for cover, Whatever it is, you can't see the big picture because that would distract you. You can't be like, oh, look at that nice sunset when the car is going to hit you. You really need to hyper-focus. And that makes complete sense because it keeps you safe in that moment, but it also locks down all the other potentials. So when you're reading um, a news article 
and you're seeing all these alarming facts, but you can't really process it in kind of a, a logical place because you're so locked down. So the number one thing people can do every day to just try to take care of their health is to really try to, I mean, going outside is great, grounding, get yourself into that calmer, safe place. Mm -hmm. Some things that help, um, deep breathing, breathing from the diaphragm, anything that kind of engages the body. I, I have an oil that I love. It's called parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. And I have I people put one. it right here because um, it's interesting. It's th this vagus nerve that is the on-off switch between your emergency and safety state. And it starts at the very back of the brain on the brainstem and then winds around. It's most accessible here, kind of through your throat and your um, your face and through every organ of digestion and anything, including the heart and the lungs. So being very intentional, like through meditation about slowing your heart rate or um, yoga or running or any athletic activity that engages your lungs. And especially if you can really breathe from your diaphragm, that kind of calms it down. Even if you um, just use your hand and massage here or pretend that your tongue is a paintbrush and just painting on the roof of your mouth, all of those things really activate that parasympathetic calm state. And um, the way I describe it, you know, we're in Seattle, traffic is nuts. Uh, and there are days when you're driving and someone cuts you off and you think, whatever, you know, maybe they're in a hurry, who cares? You're fine, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Other days, exact same situation and four letter words are flying out of your mouth. The only difference is you and kind of how calm and grounded you are and how able you are to respond to external stressors. You know, when you're in that parasympathetic state, people can cut you off, people can run red lights, you can kind of be like, well, that was a silly choice, you know, but it doesn't affect you, you don't get upset. Mm -hmm. And the more you're able to kind of navigate through what's going on now, you can read a news article and say like, oh, that's interesting, that seems to, you know, that doesn't really align with the other thing I read and maybe you can, read more and go deeper. And someone sent me an article that, you know, 35% of the cases are asymptomatic carriers. And I thought, how oh, where'd they get that information? You know how they got it? It was assumptions and estimates. They made it up. It was fiction. There's like no backing for that. So you can say like, oh, okay, well maybe that wasn't the best source. Maybe I'll look at a different source. You know, you can be open-minded and curious mm -hmm. and, and not get so trapped in that like caged animal experience. Yeah, I think curious is right and keep an open mind and like everything, just, you know, paying attention how you feel. But what I feel like we really need to teach people, you are responsible for your own health. Like you said, wearing, I wear a mask if I go to somewhere public because I should feel safe, but I don't because you don't know those other people's lifestyle habits. I don't care anymore about being with my own circle, my network, because I know those people all take care of themselves. They're healthy and I know them and I can trust them. But when we start to go out in public, I wish we could trust everyone's healthy, but how many people, you know, are still eating the standard American diet and don't exercise. They're very sedentary. They don't get outside. They don't get fresh air. That's what I feel like. Okay. You know, maybe we do need a little bit of protection going outside, even if it works or not work because of being courteous, courteous to others, but because I don't trust their habits, I don't know you. So I, how, how do I know if you're not healthy? So that's kind of the complicated part, but I just feel like this is the time when we say this stupid, annoying, <laughs> stay at home, stay safe and stay healthy. This last three months, I'm like, what the heck does that mean? You know, staying home is not isolating yourself doesn't mean you're working on your health. And so that's why I wanted to bring you on because you've done great blogs and really good explanations of here's what we should be doing. Here's how the nutrition we need and, you know, talking about nutritional therapy. So what are things that you find you've learned for yourself that other people, you know, you're working with and, and with your nutritional therapy background are, are doing to take ownership self-care, take responsibility, take charge of your health? I think um, the first thing I want to kind of bring up is mindset and this idea that there's kind of the victim mentality, you know, oh my God, people might infect me. And then there's that idea of personal responsibility and, and self-responsibility. And I actually, I trust that I can keep myself reasonably safe. Mm -hmm. I trust that even if I am on a plane, 
with someone who is coughing the entire time next to me that my immune system is strong enough that you know I, I have clearly been exposed but I'm still gonna be okay because yeah. I built my house out of bricks mm -hmm. and you know that big bad wolf is not going to be able to mm -hmm. plow me down and I think that is really the only way for me I mean everyone gets to decide what works for them but to know that I, I'm going to be okay. And, and what I think the main building blocks of being okay are is really sleep. I think sleep is the absolute most important thing. I think you have to prioritize your sleep. Um, I've read that getting to bed before nine is better. If it's hard for you to fall asleep, things that really help me, I like Epsom salt baths. Um, Mark Hyman has a recipe that I like. It's two cups of Epsom salt, one cup of baking soda, and then I use lavender oil and I make the bath as hot as I possibly can get it. And sometimes just a little nutrition tip. Um, I think that supporting your liver and your gallbladder, anything you can do, your immune system is really closely tied to your detoxification system because not just like viruses and bacteria, but even heavy metals or um, glyphosate that's on in organic food, all of those things require your immune system to respond. So the more your detoxification system is really working super well and helping carry out those toxins along with like the pathogens, the healthier you're going to be. So castor oil, super cheap, get it in a glass bottle because it is so detoxifying that if it comes in plastic, it pulls it out of the plastic. I ordered one on Amazon and got it in like a day. But just putting that over your gallbladder and your liver, especially when you're getting in a hot bath, it really just helps to calm any inflammation in those detoxification organs. And if you think about um, the way things leave our body, right? They start in the cell and then they move into our lymphatic fluid, which carries it to the blood, which carries it to the liver, to the gallbladder, to the gut, and then to the toilet. And at any point it can get backed up. Like if your liver is really, really overwhelmed, uh, it can kick back into the bloodstream and then it has to go out through either your skin so you get some kind of rash or your kidneys so you feel low back pain or have to urinate more often. So things like just putting castor oil on in the bath or there's a complicated way that you can do a castor oil pack. You buy burlap, you put plastic over it, you then use heating pad. Um, if, if that feels right, do that. I'm lazy, so I just take castor oil, I put it on in the bath, and then I just wear a t-shirt that castor oil can stain, so don't wear your fancy silk pajamas, but you know, like a ratty old concert t-shirt that if I get a stain, oh well. <laughs> and your body heat when you go to sleep just helps with that. So yeah. sleep is important, supporting detoxification, other things that help the liver, all those green leafy vegetables, beets are really good, kale is really good, Brussels sprouts, um, supplements like milk thistle are really fantastic. And then something people don't talk about enough binders. So what happens is sometimes the, um, the gallbladder carries, oh, bitters are good too. Coffee, I actually think is really good. It kind of mobilizes bile flow. Um, it's not just because I love coffee, but it dumps into the gut and sometimes those toxins get reabsorbed. So things like binders, which are like charcoal or psyllium or chlorella there's one that i like that you can get on amazon called gi detox it just kind of grabs the toxins and escorts them out so that you're sure that they leave the body mm -hmm. and it just you know it's kind of like um if you have a big party and you have to clean up it's a lot more mess than just having like your family for dinner so the more you can alleviate any kind of toxic load from any other um, pollutants, the more energy your body and your immune system have to really kind of take on the pathogen if it comes. Um, energy is important with that. So sleep helps with energy. Also making sure you get oxygen. So even just walking outside for 20 minutes, you know, ideally, honestly, without a mask, because then you can get more oxygen in. So try to pick a place where you might not run into a lot of people. Um, and then blood sugar. Blood sugar feeds your brain, it feeds your body. So making sure that you're, you know, eating meals that are not just carbohydrate heavy. You know, when we were in the Nutritional Therapy Association, they talked about how carbohydrates are like the kindling for the fire mm -hmm. and fat and protein were more of the slow burning log. So really try to feed yourself nutritious foods so that your body has the energy to really 
move through um, viruses. And then, you know, for immune support, it's interesting, our body's immune support is our response is to kind of heat our body, right? That's why we spike a fever. That's why things like hot tea and hot soup, hot baths, saunas, um, you know, gallbladder packs, anything that you can do to really kind of warm your body. Because what that does, if you think about blood flow, you know, one of the reasons you have inflammation is because it opens up your veins so that the blood flows more easily. So just trying to, you know, it could be a foot bath. It could be anything that just warms you up because when you're warmer, that's why one of the reasons they say that it's harder for viruses to survive like in the summer months, just because we're, we're warmer. Yeah. Hot oils, you know, there's this, um, this story about uh, this thieves blend and during the bubonic plague, there were thieves that were stealing the gold teeth out of dead people's mouths. So, you know, we think about where social distancing, they had their hands in the mouths, like the mouth is like the microbiome hub, you know, and yeah. they're not dying or getting sick. And so when they were apprehended, the authorities were like, what did you do? And it turns out that they had this thieves blend. We have a similar version called immune support, which is hot oils like clove and thyme and oregano, nutmeg, all of these, you know, eucalyptus things. And just breathing it in kind of helped to speed up the um, immune response so they never got sick. Yeah, that's why I, I think we don't hear about this information because it doesn't make billions of dollars. So no one's really... <laughs> promoting it because it's it's like okay it doesn't cost money to do some intermittent fasting it doesn't cost money to, or make anyone money for us to go outside and get fresh air and get sunlight exposure you know no one makes money off of that and to eat real food instead of the processed packaged foods that are in the grocery stores and it's just sad that's always an uphill battle but that's why i feel like it's our mission our purpose to share this information with the world it's like here's what you need to do so you can go out there and and trust your health and trust your immune system strong enough that the day that comes that you are going to have interaction with that virus or any virus, you know, not just yeah. this one, that you're able to defend yourself and you have built up your defense team. And I was writing about like building up for the Super Bowl. You know, you have to get all your players in ready race shape and get them to perform their best on race day. And so I think you know, what we should be doing now is just here's some things like you're just shared a great list of things that are easy to do sleep, you know, take ownership and only you can make yourself go to bed at a certain time and not stay up till midnight watching Netflix and, you know, get up and shower in the morning, go outside for a walk and, and just have these routines. Cause I think so many people just like, Oh, I don't have to go to work. I'm staying up till whatever. I'm drinking alcohol every night. I'm having pizza and burgers and fried food that's, you know, easy to go because it's the only food you can eat out. So it's just really frustrating. I just wish more people would realize how important it is right now to take care of the whole you. Yeah. Well, and just even like the, the mindset, I think that's what uh, my mom was telling me. She has like one friend that she socially distanced walks with on Mercer Island, like this <laughs> tiny suburb. And, you know, downtown, there really isn't traffic. So they just walk in the street so they can walk six feet apart. And she's like, someone was like, she was really upset, like yelling at me and honking and telling me I was a bad person because I was doing this. And, you know, I, I feel like when you feel unsafe, everything feels like a threat. And I don't mm -hmm. feel like we should be tearing at each other right now. Yeah. Like, I really think that everyone does the best job they can. You know, and I really feel like it would be lovely if we could all go into our hearts and recognize that our neighbors are just doing the best that they can. And we have no idea. You know, it's hard to be, um, you know, I, I'm a working mom. I have a kid. I'm trying to homeschool. I'm trying to keep the house Sorry. clean and take the dog out. And it's just we're all juggling so much and you know we can feel like the soda can that you shake up that's ready to explode yeah. and I think one way to really re release that energy definitely exercise and movement and walking but like for essential oils um rose there's a researcher actually here in Seattle her name is Linda Buck and she was researching uh the sense of smell actually goes directly to this part of your brain called the amygdala. All of your other senses go to another part that routed through the thalamus first. And that's because um, smell can keep you safe, right? Predator odor, you can smell water, you can smell food. It's really critical to our survival. 
So she went in and kind of did a deep dive on these olfactory receptors that were specific to predator odor. And then she tried to reverse engineer, well, what would shut these down and calm them down? And it turned out rose oil. So you know, it's pretty, it's springtime, go smell roses outside or smell rose directly or, or just apply it to your heart. And it's a really good way when you're feeling really like anxious, kind of to your point, I don't know what these people, you know, I don't know if they're washing their hands. And, and it can just make you shift and realize it doesn't matter. It's okay. They don't need to be washing their hands. I don't need to be in judgment. I, everyone's doing the best they can. And I'm just going to be kind because, you know, just being kind, like my poor mom was all shook up, you know, she's, she's really, she's a rules girl and she was doing her best to follow the rules. And, you know, yeah. there are no rules. It's such a weird time. And, you know, you just, do your best to know that you're a good person. And the other thing that um, that I've learned from our colleague Titus Chu, he does a lot of research on what happens in the right side of the brain, what happens in the left side of the brain. And this can make you really anxious, you know, and maybe have an anxiety attack or something like that. When you're feeling that anxious, that is often the right front part of your brain that's kind of overactivating. And the way to calm that down is to balance it by activating the left front part of your brain. And this is what's incredibly cool. So your nose is actually brain cells. So if you smell something, it goes directly to this frontal part. So you can just smell, it can be oil. Um, oils actually reside in the peels of citrus roots. So you can even peel a tangerine or a lemon and just smell something through your left nostril. That will immediately activate the left frontal side of your brain, balance the right side and calm you down immediately. Like I've done this in a supermarket. I've, I've, I used to have anxiety attacks in supermarket checkouts and I was buying tangerines and I'm like, you know, people Sniffing probably thought I was super strange, but it, it calmed me down. Well, I love that. That's a great tip. You never knew that. So there's, I think it is, you know, really important word is, is talking about anxiety and this chronic stress we're in and how we're talking about how I've talked a lot about how chronic stress impacts the whole you and yeah. increases your decreases your immune system, also increases your blood sugar levels, but just how important stress reduction is. And you talk about all sorts of methods that are calming, you know, getting outside and walking and, and breathing exercises and all that and yoga and sauna and all those things are beneficial, but there's just importance to people understand the relationship between stress and immune system. And that includes exercising too much as a lot of our athletes or endurance athletes training for Iron Man or a 50k run or something that might not happen, but they're still training a lot. So I'm just so concerned about just like you said, homeschooling, working at home, everyone's under one roof, you know, all the stress we have in our lives and how that impacts our immune system and overall health. Yeah. And that, you know, we always hear about how stress kind of lowers your immune tolerance and it can be the trigger for something happening. And I never really connected the dots. I was interviewing Kieran Krishnan, who um, started this company, Megaspore. It's really He's good been probiotics. been like five times. <laughs> yeah, I love him. And he explained it really well. Basically, what he said is that we have these opportunistic bacteria in our gut. And by opportunistic, what that means is they kind of lay low and they're in balance. And suddenly when they sense opportunity, an opportunity comes in the form of these stress hormones. When they sense cortisol and adrenaline in your system, they're like, yay, opportunity. You are weak. We are going to multiply and release all these toxins and really go after you because we can get you when you're down. Mm -hmm. And so what happens if you're over exercising, you know, working out, like, it's fine if, if you, you know, if you're training for uh, whatever event and running 13 miles is no big deal for you, that's, that's good. But maybe take a day off. Like, don't keep pushing yourself because your body, it's like whipping a horse, right? In order to release those stress hormones, you have to push yourself harder. And so many of us, myself included, have this kind of mind over matter, no pain, no gain, you know, I can just push through it. But especially now when you're really trying to make sure your immune system is stable, like, you know, you, you don't need to go from uh, running 13 miles a day to being a, a couch potato, but just be mindful, like don't necessarily push yourself harder. 
you know, take, take a down day. And in that down day, that's when your body is able to recover. Like I was always surprised when I'd go on vacation and, and then I'd go back and I'd have, you know, those runs that are just like the best run. And you're like, my God, I ran so fast and so far and I feel great. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of let yourself um, balance out and, and, and don't over push yourself because then those opportunistic um, pathogens can start to say, ooh, you know, here we go. And, and what happens is uh, once, like say that these opportunistic pathogens like candida overgrowth or whatever it is, all of a sudden your immune system is weaker because it's almost like if you've ever been at a party and you're having a conversation and then someone else joins you, it's hard to talk to multiple people at once. It's hard to have to juggle all of these different invaders at once. If your system is balanced and suddenly COVID or whatever it is comes along, you're, you're in a really solid place to kind of deal with it, move on. But if you're already dealing with um, latent Epstein-Barr or maybe Lyme or, you know, Candida or whatever else it is, then you're exhausted. You know, it's like <laughs> they say when you're running a marathon, like you don't run the day before, you know, <laughs> you're not going to run 23 miles the day before your marathon because you're going to show up tired. You really want to show up in your optimal shape. Yeah, that's so true. And I think a lot of people forget that, that being fit and healthy on the outside and what I keep writing about every week, are you healthy on the inside? What's under the hood? And as FDN practitioners in nutritional therapy, we work on testing, you know, functional evaluation or functional lab testing to really assess. And a lot of things you don't know about unless you run tests to really learn what's going on because you can be fit and feeling strong and being this superhero, but then you realize, okay, my, you know, markers are so low. My hormones are imbalanced. And I just redid all my labs, well, two of them, three of them, last few months. And so I just went through a whole protocol because I did have a lot of stress closing my business last October, my studio. And I was a complete emotional mess for a few months or like last six months of the year last year. And, and I just had opportunistic guys come back up and I've been feeling good. And then I just started feeling bad again. So it's always having to keep those in check and monitor your stress, especially if you're type like me, that tends to get stressed more easily than others. And you have to always work on keeping your stress level in check. But yeah, I definitely just did, you know, one of them was the microbiome labs test, the biome FX and uh, a GI test and my Dutch hormone test and really working on a 90 day protocol to make sure my immune system's ready so I can defend myself when I'm around people who are not so healthy. Yeah. Well, and you know, one thing that you said that I really like is I, I think that people, if the more you can kind of tune in to where you're at and, and use your own gauge, you know, like my daughter is an athlete who obviously, you know, they're now doing Zoom workouts. And some days she is hardcore and she does like three workouts. And some days she's like, I am just so tired. And I'm like, listen to that and, and honor that. Yeah. And, and the other thing that you brought up that I think is really valuable is kind of the emotional part of it. Like I am, most people don't know what to do with emotions. So we either, um, we distract ourselves. Like I'm a workaholic because if I can be so busy that I don't need to feel, then I don't need to feel, you know, some people numb their pain with food, some people with drugs or alcohol. There are lots of things, you know, devices. We're, we're constantly on Facebook, so we don't need to feel, but I think there's an opportunity in this um, pandemic and this shelter in place to try to wade into those feelings and they're hard, you know, they're, they're really yucky. Someone um, gave me a good example of kind of put out a chair. Like my, my issue is anger, which often masks sadness. I don't need to feel sad because I can feel angry. So pretend that, you know, your anger or your sadness or whatever it is, is a chair, sit in it, feel like what, what is coming up and just kind of lean into it. Like as, as an athlete and kind of a warrior, I'm, I'm strong, but this is something I didn't know how to do, so I didn't do it. I avoided it. Mm -hmm. But just letting it kind of move through you. Emotions are motion. Let them move through and then out. Because if you're holding on to something or repressing something, that makes you more vulnerable. So just mm -hmm. kind of take the time. Um, sometimes I, I walk. I, there's something about being in motion or doing yoga, it just helps me kind of think through and discharge things. 
um, Epsom cell baths are really a good way to kind of release things, but just, just be mindful of that. Like my best friend was telling me, she's like, I don't know why, you know, everyone I know is healthy. Um, my kids are great. My relationship's great. Like I have no reason to be upset, but I'm really like moody and angry and just give yourself permission that it's okay. This, this is not what you signed up for. This is not how you thought you'd be spending your summer. So you're, you're allowed to feel whatever you're feeling. Yeah, especially all those kids. And I know so many kids graduating this year and, and college kids. So it is, it is really important. A few words I keep hearing that I've been writing down. No judging others. Being kind. Kindness is in calm and being mindful. And I yeah. think those are key words I keep hearing that resonate with me because I do find, you know, my friend, we were talking last night, how you have to disconnect and plug from social media. And I had to delete Facebook a few times <laughs> once a week. Uh, just like, I can't read and read all this stuff. You just get down all these rabbit holes and, and researching things that you just have to stay away from it for sometimes and set boundaries, but taking care of yourself. So you are healthy and you're paying attention to those red flags. Like I need a rest day or this isn't a good day for a run. I'm going to go for a nice walk. And I find, you know, what is a gift in this horrible situation is, all right, is it creating more awareness that we need to work on our health, building health from the inside out, work on digestion and stress reduction, getting more time outside, less time on social media, less time on electronics, and just being always connected and with everything else and just start to connect with yourself and your friends and your family. So it's just like, okay, what am, what am I learning from this? I got on my yoga mat. I'm doing yoga almost every day with my husband and we're doing yin yoga for the first time and we're walking. We've never walked in our neighborhood. And you know, you gotta think, okay, what is, what is, what's the purpose? Why is this happening? What's the reason? You know, what can we get out of this to make it a beneficial experience even though it's tragic? Yeah, yeah, and I, I love that. And just also being, compassionate with yourself and you know it's funny I'm so overachieving and now I'm like all right what do I actually need to do for me mm -hmm. like um you know I, I used to make family photo albums and I stopped and I'm like all right I can like carving out time I like to read books you know just allowing myself time to do things that really bring me joy well yeah what you're saying like you're saying you're a workaholic and that you weren't able to deal with emotions or, you know, you put stress or anger into just ignoring those feelings and just work more and write more and research more that you probably push yourself that you don't really take time to go, okay, what does Jody need today? What do I need for self-care? How am I going to take care of myself rather than just work, work, work? And I think that's so common for most people. They just, let's not deal with what the underlying layers are going on that driving me so it's like people for athletes I would say what are you racing for what's your reason you know what are you running really from what are you trying to avoid or hide from yes that's great. so let's move into vibrant oils the blue oils because I really am a big fan found them very beneficial and I think a lot of people are probably like, ah you know what's the oil gonna do for me and they're just like there's no research or science behind that and feel like it's an oil how's that work so I know like you were shown the parasympathetic oil, the vagal nerve is huge. I do the liver support and the adrenal one and I want to buy the immune one. It's so good too. But like talk about a little bit. We have like 15 minutes. I don't know. It's a whole hour. We've done a previous podcast, but share what we can do for oils is helping. Yeah. Out. And, and for those of you that don't know what oils are is the highly concentrated essences of plants. So the bark, the resin, the leaves, the flowers. And what most people don't realize is that pharmaceutical drugs are a relatively new invention, like the last hundred years. And most of them are derived from plants. Like white willow bark is what became aspirin. Valerian root is what became Valium. So you can get the same benefit from plants that you can from pharmaceutical drugs. And in some cases more so because in order to patent something, you need to change it. So the example people use is, if you hold up your right hand like to a mirror, it's your right hand, but in the mirror it's slightly different. And so that's why you have side effects because plants and humans are pretty biofamiliar. You know, we're both made of the same material. We've been eating plants and the animals that, you know, graze on the nutrient dense plants forever. So if you're taking in a plant, it doesn't have it basically synthesizes with your body in a really natural way. And so it can allow you to relax. It can also um, 
the cool thing about oils, they're super concentrated, so they're kind of like a, a mega balancing dose, mm -hmm. but they're also chemically unique in that uh, they can access the blood-brain barrier. So, you know, you can't do chemotherapy on the brain because the molecules are too big. In order to get into the brain, you need to pass through the blood-brain barrier, which like the gut barrier is really, you know, tight junction, junctions, and it only lets super, super small fat-based molecules through. So what are essential oils? They're super, super small fat-based molecules. So they can get into the brain. And then the other cool thing, like where does everything start? It starts with the cell, right? Like um, our neurotransmitters, our hormones, they're all kind of signaling the cell and then the cell responds based on the signal. And some things like endocrine disrupting toxins, you know, like plastics, what they're doing is they're locking into that uh, synapse where the signals are supposed to get and they're sending the wrong messages or blocking messages. Oils are kind of fabulous because our cells are also, our cell membranes are fat soluble. And so they can do two things. They can kind of clean the cell membrane so that the uh, toxic disruptors don't interrupt the signal. And they can also do things like um, GABA is our inhibitory um, neurotransmitters. So for example, when we're low on GABA, we don't have a lot of inhibition. So think of like the totally ADD kid, oh, a squirrel, they shout out in class. They never, you know, have that awareness of stopping to talk. So if we can help GABA be more inhibiting, then we can be more unbalanced. You know, serotonin, we want to stimulate. We want more of that. That makes us feel happy. So essential oils can really, it's, it's balancing, but what it does is it helps to give you kind of the healthy level of GABA so you can inhibit all of your distraction and also the healthy level of serotonin so that you can kind of feel happy and relaxed and calm. So that's how essential oils work. Also, you know, topical application. We know that like nicotine patches or hormonal creams work in our system. What happens is if you put something on topically or transdermally, it gets into your bloodstream in like 20 minutes. This is another reason that like, you know, cosmetics that might have um, toxic additives are not super great because they get into your bloodstream. But it's just a much easier way to get into your system, especially if you have like leaky gut or slow digestion or anything that's going on. You know, we're trying to assimilate our food, our supplements, other nutrients through our digestive tract. And if that's a little you know, roadblock, like we both live in Seattle, there's always construction on one of the major highways. So, you know, if I-5, the major north-south highway is blocked, you can take 99, you can take alternative detour routes. So oils are really great because they offer that, you know, you can smell them, gets directly into the brain, you can topically apply. It's just a good bypass there. Yeah, I think that's a key point because I always think, okay, you can't out supplement a bad diet and you can't take a lot of supplements and or you know rely on good food if your gut wall barrier is destroyed and you have leaky gut because you're not even able to break things down if you don't digest it and absorb it so i think you know that's why the transdermal supplements as you're talking about quicksilver stuff like that but also oils how they're much more effective and you don't have to break them down yeah, well, and even things like, you know, my daughter is running. Frankincense is a resin. If you think about what a resin is, it's kind of like, it, it's the Band-Aid for the plant, right? It heals and it kind of protects things. So say that you're chafing, you can use frankincense to kind of help the skin heal. You can use oils also, um, you know, plants, they have their roots in the ground, which is where the water is. And some of them are, you know, like 50 feet high. How does the water get up to the leaves and to nourish the plant? They help to move things through the body. So certain oils can help um, dilate the veins more so that blood flows more easily. They can help open up like calm inflammation so that like lymph can drain down the neck. It, it's really fabulous. It's almost like biking in you know, with the wind in your back, it just helps us to open up the different systems in your body so that they perform better, right? Mm -hmm. And we always, I remember nutritional therapy, I always think of the, the PALS that we always wanted to support, as you said, you know, we talk about the adrenals and the pancreas and the liver, but the, and the importance of liver function, no one really talks about enough right now and how we need to support the adrenals or the HPA access and supporting you know, the liver, gall, bladder, bile flow, and just the whole importance of being able to get rid of, well, one, to have proper detoxification 
phase one and phase two, but phase three, I keep thinking is the elimination pathway. If you don't have all the ingredients to make that work at optimal level, but the oils I find are beneficial and calming too. If I use it at nighttime before bed. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's interesting because I've really tried, I've been doing this for 10 years now. And so I've kind of figured out like where to start with people because they're like, Mm -hmm. I have everything wrong. You know, number one is sleep. If you're not sleeping, it's pretty impossible to heal. So we need Mm -hmm. to make sure that you are able to fall asleep and stay asleep. One of the issues for night waking, your liver is the most active while you're sleeping, mostly around 3 a.m. So if you're waking up around 3 a.m., maybe you have to go to the bathroom, you're slightly groggy, you can kind of fall back asleep, that's your liver. And what's happening is it's like overworking. You're giving it more um, toxins to kind of get rid of than it can handle. And I found detoxification is the second. Like most people, you know, thyroid function, even energy, all of these things that are like, this isn't working. If you can just support your liver and help to get the garbage out of your body more quickly, then everything else frees up. It's, you know, you have limited energy, right? It's kind of like um, you have a limited budget, right? You have a hundred dollars. You can uh, make your car payment. You can go out to dinner or you can, you know, go on a vacation, pick one, right? If, if you, take care of those other things, then you have more flexibility. So if you're, um, you know, living in an environment that's really, if if you're eating inorganic food, and so your liver is constantly having to process the pesticides and herbicides out of your system, if you're smoking, if you're drinking, if you're intentionally adding to your toxic burden, your liver is going to have to work harder. So anything that you can kind of take out of um, you know that experience so that the liver has less to process and more energy. Anything you can do, like our, our oil blend is fabulous. It just helps to kind of um, give the liver more energy and more vitality and kind of helps uh, the liver can get inflamed, which then backs up its ability to function as well. So it just calms that. It like, It's almost like you know when you're biking up a hill, if you're in the highest gear, it's gonna be a lot harder, right? If you yeah. can downshift, then all of a sudden it's easy peasy. So it just helps your liver shift into the right gear so things are easier. Perfect. So how do we get started? So we can send people, I'll put links in the show notes to learn more because you have a lot yeah. of just health building tips on there, your blogs. Yeah. Are amazing. And you put a lot of research and scientific data behind them. So it's not just all just opinions. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we can give people like a, a free checklist, like the parasympathetic checklist, mm-hmm. just to yeah, see, because sure. that's usually a really good place to start, especially now. Most people are just feeling so like overwhelmed and yeah. anxious, and maybe, you know, they're a really nice person, and they just like had a silly fight with their partner or their child, and they know like that was, you know, I don't know why I'm overreacting. I just don't feel right. Often, if you can just shift yourself into that state where you feel safe, and everything feels a little bit more manageable, then things are, life is easier. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of a reset, reboot, yeah. and recalibrate. Reboot to factory settings, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking of as your computer, you know, if a computer doesn't work, what do you do? Control, alternate, delete, you know, just turn everything off, close it out and restart it. And simple things like that for our own body, we can do if we just, I feel kind of off and a little more irritable, more anxious, I can't sleep, I just wired or I'm just exhausted and brain fog and all that. So it's just really, you know, learning simple steps, as you said, we'll put in the show notes, the links for that. And then the the parasympathetic nervous system checklist, I think is important because so many athletes, we're all typically type A, triple A and overachievers and athletes of any level, but just, you know, a lot of people just want more information and they don't realize that they're kind of in that sympathetic overdrive and sympathetic dominant. They don't know how to. Yeah. Or they, I mean, it it can be subtle things. Like if there are ridges on your nails, Mm -hmm. that means that you're not releasing enough hydrochloric acid. And so the nutrients are getting absorbed. If you're constantly, if you're supplementing with like B vitamins or D vitamins and you're constantly testing low for that, that means that you're not assimilating your nutrients and breaking them down and getting them into Mm -hmm. your body. So it can be really minor tweaks. I mean, and you can be at 95%. It's kind of like you know, maybe your time is a seven minute mile and you want to get down to six. You know, seven minutes is still good, but you just need to kind of line up a little bit more. And these minor, minor tweaks can really make a big difference. Well, that's what I also keep saying. You know, you kind of start settling that, oh, this is my new normal. This is how it is. I'm getting older. And you just kind of 
settle. And we don't know like, okay, I did this, I felt okay, but I could be, you know, so much better and feeling so much even more productive. Do you ever do that? Like you have a really good race and you reverse engineer, like, what did I do right? Like, <laughs> why, why was this day like so on fire? You know? I know, this is one of those things that you can do right. That's pretty easy. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Jody. You're filled with knowledge and always so smart about everything and doing your research all the time. So just make sure you're making time for yourself. And we all <laughs> practice what we have, are preaching is what I keep trying to do and do my yoga and go for my walks and, you know, take a, a rest, active recovery day when needed. But yeah, getting our sleep right now is really essential. And we did that the first part of this stay at home thing, staying up a little bit later and now we're kind of back in a routine. So I think that's a big step is, you know, maybe go back to getting to bed earlier and setting your alarm if you need to, not sleeping. And even if it's, you know, you have seven days a week, if you can do it like three or four days, that's great. It doesn't need to be every day. Just try to kind of carve out time to prioritize okay. sleep. Good. All right. And then what's your website we want to send people to? Your website? Oh, it's Vibrant Blue Oils, V-I-B-R-A-N-T, blue like the color, O-I-L-S dot com. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for your info and resources, and we'll learn more in the show notes, guys. All right. Thank you.